Hello and welcome back to another Giant Slayer TFT video. Today we'll be covering the 14 classes of set 5. This is the second video we're doing on the synergies of set 5 as the first one covered the 13 origins. There's quite a few returning classes from previous set mixed in with a lot of new ones as well. Keep in mind that the PBE is still ongoing and there's going to be a lot of changes until set 5 fully releases. Because of that, we're avoiding specific numbers wherever possible. With all that said, let's go ahead and dive on in. But before we begin, please don't forget to click the links in our description. Give your support to everyone who helped make this video happen. We host many TFT tournaments with plenty of exciting content to come. So be sure to also follow our Giant Slayer TFT social media pages. All right, let's get back to the video. To start things off, we have a returning class from previous sets, Assassin. Assassin is a 2, 4, and 6 piece trait with a total of 6 champions. Those champions are Kha'Zix, LeBlanc, Katarina, Nocturne, Diana, and Viego. There is a special item for Assassin that requires a regular glove. For any veteran players, the trait remains the same as it previously was, but for those of you new to TFT, we can quickly break down what Assassin does. Innately, Assassin champions will jump into the backline at the beginning of combat. On top of that, they gain increased critical strike chance and critical strike damage, which increases as you add more of the trait. There's really not that much else to discuss in regards to Assassins, as they've been in almost every set so far. Another returning class from previous sets is Brawler. Brawler is back once again, except this time it's only a 2 and 4 piece trait with 5 total champions. Those champions are Gragas, Warwick, Set, Nunu, and Volibear. There is no spatula item for Brawler, so in order to hit early for Brawler, you need to find all the low-cost champs, as the only other Brawler champion is Volibear, which is a 5-cost unit. Nothing has changed for Brawlers as the units get increased health as the trade is active. While Brawler is used as frontline, they will also fall off in the mid-game since they are only low-cost units. That said, in the late game, you will have the option of adding in Volibear, who does bring much-needed crowd control to any frontline, so there may be some use for Brawlers at that stage of the game. Much like Assassin, there's really not a whole lot to discuss in regards to Brawlers, as most players know what they do from previous sets, and for new players, the health bonus is easy to understand. Next up is our first solo class of set 5, Caretaker. Caretaker is the specific trait given to the 5-cost champion Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger also has the Origins Draconic and Renewer, so it's not the first time we've mentioned him thus far. But those are shared traits, whereas Caretaker is the only on Heimerdinger, which makes him one of the unique champions of set 5. When you place Heimerdinger on the board, you gain a Baby Dragon, which gains 100% of Heimer's attack speed and restores 50 mana upon dying. Basically, Caretaker is a summon trait, though it's not quite the same value as Eternal, as Wolf has its own separate ability from Kindred. Instead, the Baby Dragon only casts when Heimerdinger does, and Heimerdinger only does ability damage through the Dragon, so you need both for the trait to be useful. Overall, this trait has an interesting design, but having the Dragon and Heimerdinger so reliant on one another may lower the usefulness of this trait. Let's move on to one of the funnest classes, Cavalier. Cavalier is a 2, 3, and 4 piece trait that consists of 4 champions. Those are Kled, Sejuani, Hecarim, and Rel. You can also give the Cavalier trait to any champion with a spatula plus a Shadow Chain Vest. We're saying Cavalier is a lot of fun because of the innate bonus that Cavalier champions get, which causes them to charge towards their target whenever they move. This charge is fun to watch, especially when there's a lot of distance between the Cavalier unit and their target. In addition to the charge, Cavalier champions also take reduced damage. This effect is then increased at the beginning of combat and whenever they charge for a few seconds. The amount of damage reduction goes up with each tier of the trait. Since the trait goes up by one each tier, it's easy to fit in multiple Cavalier units on your board. While there are a lot of frontline options in set 5, Cavaliers are so far one of the best, specifically Rel as she quickly became a top frontline champion on the BBE. Overall, Cavaliers look like a well-designed frontline class for set 5. The only potential issue is that the damage reduction can cause balancing issues, so they'll have to be extra careful when tweaking those numbers. Next, we have another solo class with Cruel. Cruel is the solo trait for Teemo in Set 5. There's a couple of unique aspects to this trait, but the one that stands out the most is that you cannot buy Teemo with gold. Instead, you have to pay health, which comes from your little legend and total health pool. Now, you may think that you can sell Teemo back to regain health, but no. Once you buy him, that health is gone, as selling him will give you gold instead. The other interesting aspect of the Cruel trait is a bit ambiguous in its description. It's worded that a Cruel champion hungers to be alone against exactly one enemy left standing. That's all the trait says, which again is pretty vague. 
In reality, what happens is when there's one unit left against Teemo, Teemo essentially auto wins the fight. So be wary about playing any long drawn out compositions that come down to the wire as anyone running Teemo is going to win the round against you. The last unique class of set 5 is God King. God King is a trait unique to both Garen and Darius, but the way it affects them is slightly different. A God King champion deals bonus damage against enemies that have at least one of their rival traits. In order to have this trait active, you can only have one God King on your board, so make sure you're not losing out on additional damage by having both Garen and Darius in play. Garen's rival traits are Forgotten, Nightbringer, Coven, Hellion, Dragon Slayer, Abomination, and Revenant. Darius' rival traits are Redeemed, Dawnbringer, Verdant, Draconic, and Ironclad. The rival trait system adds an interesting strategic layer to the late game because you can try to counter specific players by playing one of the God Kings that gains the most amount of value against said player's board. At the moment, this rival system seems a bit underutilized, but we'll likely see it play a major role in the future as players get better at set 5. Moving along, we have Invoker. Invoker is a 2 and 4 piece class that consists of 4 champions. Those champions are Syndra, Ivern, Karma, and Teemo. It's an easy to understand trait as all allies gain extra mana from their attacks when an invoker is active. The amount gained increases when you go from 2 to 4. Invoker is simple but well designed as you can easily splash in invoker to gain value from the trait. Compared to say Enlighten from set 4 which only affected Enlighten units, it's good to see them take a similar concept and then improve upon it. The only downside to Invoker is that you won't be able to activate it early game unless you high roll an early 4 cost. This means Syndra basically won't have one of her traits until you reach the mid game and can play additional Invoker units. Next up we have another returning class from a previous set, Knight. Knight is back this time as a 2, 4, and 6 piece trait with a total of 7 champions. Those champions are Leona, Poppy, Nautilus, Thresh, Taric, Darius, and Garen. The trait is the same it was in the past, with all allies blocking a flat amount of damage from all sources. Basically, when you have knight champions in, your whole board takes less damage. Overall, the knight trait is simple and easy to employ, particularly early game where the reduced damage is going to be most noticeable. All the knight champions serve well in the front line, so expect this trait to be commonly used in a lot of comps. Moving on, we have Legionnaire. Legionnaire is a 2, 4, 6, and 8 piece class trait that consists of 7 total champions. Those champions are Aatrox, Callista, Riven, Yasuo, Draven, Mordkaiser, and Kale. On top of those champions, you can add additional ones with a spatula plus a normal bow. Legionnaire is a trait for carries as Legionnaire champions gain bonus attack speed, plus the first time they cast an ability, they heal for a percentage of the damage dealt. Essentially, when you use this trait, you're going to be using it for the increased attack speed, which increases the higher you go up with the trait. Draven is the most obvious carry, but almost all of them are designed in a way that can be used as a carry. Callista and Aatrox do well in the early game, Yasuo and Riven can serve as item holders for Draven, and of course, the late game you have Kale. Only Mordekaiser sits in a weird place for Legionnaire, but since his ability does increase damage on auto attacks, having increased attack speed is not bad for him. Once again, we have Mystic returning. Mystic is a 2, 3, and 4 piece trait with 5 total champions. Those are Lux, Lulu, Morgana, Rise, and Kindred. Nothing has changed in regard to what Mystic does, as all allies gain increased magic resist. The only notable change is that the trait goes up by 1 instead of 2 like in previous sets. We don't have much to talk about in regards to Mystic because almost everyone is familiar with it at this point. Next is the last returning class from a previous set, Ranger. Ranger is back this time as a 2 and 4 piece trait with 5 total champions. Those champions are Vayne, Varus, Ash, Aphelios, and Kindred. The basics of Ranger remain the same as Ranger champions gain a bonus attack speed buff after 4 seconds and then that bonus drops after another 4 seconds. The champions of this trait are meant to be carry, so the only one capable of carrying late game at the moment is Aphelios. Kindred is less of a carry and more of a utility champion because of their ability, same goes for Ash. Varus and Vayne both do well early game, but won't scale later on, thus leaving Aphelios as the Ranger main carry. Let's move on to the next class, Renewer. Renewer is a 2 and 4 piece trait with 5 total champions. Those champs are Lissandra, Vladimir, Soraka, Ivern, and Heimerdinger. You can also give Renewer to another champion with a spatula and a regular tier. Renewers will heal for a percentage of their max health every second, though if they're at max health, they'll instead gain mana. 
The amount restored increases when you go from two to four of the trait. This is another well-designed trait because it's simple to understand, but has interesting applications. Adding a renewer to your board early game can be a great way to win rounds because they'll survive longer than other champions. Or late game, you can use the renewer function to restore mana at full health by keeping Heimerdinger safe in the corner so it will cast his ability earlier. Overall, it's an interesting trait, though it does add more healing to the set, which already has quite a lot. Next, we have Skirmisher. Skirmisher is a 3 and 6 piece trait with 8 total champions. Those champs are Udyr, Kennen, Trundle, Lee Sin, Nidalee, Pantheon, Jax, and Viego. You can also give the Skirmisher trait to any champion with a spatula plus a regular sword. Skirmisher is another carry-like trait except it needs to scale. This is because in addition to gaining a shield at the start of combat, Skirmishers also gain bonus attack damage each second. What this means is you want your skirmishers to survive a long time so they gain more and more attack damage. Most of the skirmishers can do well as a carry at certain stages of the game, but overall, since there's so many skirmisher champions, you're going to mainly use a lot of them as trait bots. Nidalee has been used often as a carry, but the consistent carry for skirmishers seems to be Jax, though he is a melee champion, so keeping him alive can be difficult. And the last class of set 5 is Spellweaver. Spellweaver comes in as a 2 and 4 piece trait with 5 total champions. Those champions are Ziggs, Brand, Victor, Zyra, and Valkaz. You can also give Spellweaver to another champion with a spatula plus a normal rod. While there are other traits in set 5 that increase the ability power of a champion, Spellweaver is meant to be a similar design to that of Sorcerers and Mage. When active, Spellweaver champions have bonus ability power, which is then increased each time another champion uses an ability, which stacks up to 10 times. So basically, you're gaining a lot of bonus ability power when you're running Spellweaver. It's simple, but doesn't really lend itself to being all that useful, since all you're gaining is bonus ability power for those Spellweaver champions. In set 4, Mage provided double cast, and in previous sets, the bonus ability power of similar traits would boost all allies. But here, Spellweaver only affects Spellweaver champions, so it's a bit niche in how useful it really is. That, and there's really only one late game carry right now, Velkaz. Overall, the design of Spellweaver is nice and simple, but maybe a bit too simple. That's going to be it for today's video, folks. The classes of Set 5 are a nice blend of new and unique traits like Caretaker and God King, plus familiar faces like Knight and Ranger. Overall, for Set 5, they've designed a well thought out set of classes and origins, which we'll look forward to playing when the set fully launches on April 28th. Let us know in the comment section below what class you like the most from Set 5. Thank you for watching, and if you're enjoying our content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future Giant Slayer TFT videos.